Okay. So John, can you tell us a little bit about your strategy with the blankets this winter? Yep. Uh, strategy this winter with the blankets, really what we wanted to do, I have very little experience with the blankets, so I really wanted to see firsthand on site covering the infield or a portion of the field versus uncovering or not having another portion of the field uncovered. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, mid-February we came out here on the infield and on our foul territory we covered up, uh, covered the field and we left the outfield alone. Mm -hmm. Blankets sat on for about three weeks. Uh, we monitored our soil temps from the uncovered area versus the covered area. Uh, soil temps at four inches, uh, we were doing canopy temperatures. Uh, the numbers that we found were um, quite interesting. Um, at the end of the three weeks when we took the blankets off, uh, we definitely saw a noticeable difference in not only the color, uh, but the density of the turf. Um, essentially, when we took the blankets off, we felt we could have had a game that day. Color-wise, the quality of the field or the turf, uh, just night and day difference from covered versus uncovered. One thing that we did notice um, with not only having a mild winter that we had out here, but also having this area covered, that it really did kind of jump us ahead a couple weeks. Uh, granted, Mother Nature helped us out a lot, uh, having the mild winter that we had. Um, going back mowing, uh, first time I've ever mowed bluegrass in February. Uh, we did that the last week of February. Definitely a first for me. Um, a week later, we were monitoring the weather that we were having. We were looking at extended forecasts. Uh, having the field resodded back in the fall, we knew that we had, um, we wanted to be as aggressive as we could um, culturally, um, trying to get through a sod layer out here. Um, our early schedule that we had out here of aerifying, uh, we have an exhibition on April 3rd. Leading up to that exhibition, I really only thought that we were going to be able to do a very um, non abrasive or uh, minimal impact aerification as possible. Uh, we were going to use a bayonet tine, go on three inch spacing. Um, and just kind of get through that, uh, initially get through that sod layer. Um, one thing we found, we took these blankets off that the rooting that we had, the color that we had, and the temperatures that we have, we knew that we could be a little bit more aggressive than what we had originally anticipated. Um, so moving away from moving away from plan A of bayonet in the field, um, we decided we were going to go with a half inch uh, core or a half inch tine, uh, at least across the outfield, bayonet the infield, bayonet foul territory. Again, a couple days went by before we made a final decision and what we ended up deciding to do was um, we actually ended up pulling cores on the infield, uh, went away from the half inch tine. We felt comfortable enough going away from the bayonet, a half inch tine. We actually came out here with a five eighths tine, uh, pulled cores across the infield, outfield, uh, three inch spacing, uh, it stuck with bayonet and on the foul territory um, just because of the sensitivity of that area. Uh, with the players coming around first base. I didn't want to loosen up the soil too much over there or disrupt any rooting that we had going on. Um, so uh, some of the things that really helped us out this past winter, one was obviously uh, the mild winter. The tarps really kind of jump-started us to be able to do things uh, a little bit earlier than what we had anticipated. Uh, one thing that we did find um, when I was coming out here, did a lot of uh, tugging on the grass. Uh, we're doing some root checks, and that's really how we kind of got to the point where we wanted to uh, aerify them, and we found that we could be a little bit more aggressive uh, than we wanted to. Um, if, if you bring the camera down there, I'll show you that. After we aerified, as I mentioned, we did uh, aerify uh, with a 5 8 tine, three inch space, and this grass was just laid in the uh, first week of November. Uh, one of the challenges out here throughout the winter months is sun angles. Very little sun out here throughout the winter months. Um, and we knew that rooting on the infield and foul were going to be a little bit of a challenge for us coming out of the winter going into baseball. But one thing that we did find when we were aerifying was I did not want to loosen this up. And after coming out here and aerifying, pulling on this grass, we are not seeing much grass being loose. Um, so we were very comfortable with the rooting that we had going on here, very comfortable with going away from the bayonet aerification, uh, certainly going past the half inch tines and just getting a little bit more aggressive. Uh, so here we are a week later after we aerified, we've top dressed, uh, we just started putting out some uh, uh, foliar fertilizers, some granulars, and here we are a week after aerifying, uh, second, aerified first week of March, second week of March now we're out here. Um, we've recovered from our first aerification. And uh, 
the way the temperatures are for the remainder of this week and certainly into the long range, uh, we've got very uh, comfortable spring-like temperatures that should really uh, help us get going into the season. Um, out here in the outfield, uh, the part of the field that was not covered this past winter, uh, again, this was laid last uh, first week of November. Um, we were very careful with it going throughout the winter. Um, Fertilization-wise, we were very uh, cautious with what we were putting out. And uh, here we are again, uh, second week of March, uh, one week after aerifying, uh, uncovered turf out here. Um, again, we knew that we wanted to initially get through our sod layer and start our cultural practices as soon as possible. Uh, weather has helped us out. Uh, again, uh, here we are a week later after aerifying, pulling on the turf. You can see that we can pull it up a little bit more. The rooting is not as strong as it is in the infield. Um, does that have a contribution to the blankets? Um, it could. Um, other than just the visual observations I've seen, um, that's one way that I would point. Um, again, this, this area was not covered fertilization-wise. Culturally, it's the same treatment out here as we did on the infield, with the exception of just not putting winter blankets out here. Um, from aerifying, we use the same uh, size aeration tines, uh, same spacing, top dress this, top dress that. So culturally, um, managing this field, everything has been identical uh, with the exception of the blankets. Um, and not only visually can you see a difference, um, but I think that we can see a difference just in the overall recovery of this uh, part of the field versus the infield. And you were talking about sod lines. You can see just a little bit of the sod lines yeah, out here. You if, couldn't see them in yep. the end. If you uh, look across the field, the sod was laid uh, this way uh, with mm -hmm. the first base foul, uh, foul line. Uh, if you look across the field, you can, you can see some indentation of our sod lines going this way. Uh, if you look this way, even though we just mowed today, uh, you can still see them a little bit. On the infield where we were covered, it's uh, very hard to look for any type of sod lines out there. By April 3rd, the entire field looked great, and the non-covered outfield almost caught up with the infield and foul areas. John mentioned that he was interested in getting a little more scientific in his evaluation of turf performance, so we used image analysis to determine the percent green color for the covered and non-covered areas. The program we used is called APS Assess. The software takes a colored digital image and identifies each pixel based upon the color of the pixel. In essence, we can count the number of green pixels or dots in the photograph, and knowing the total number of pixels, we can calculate the percentage green color. The top four photographs in this image were taken from the non-covered outfield area. The bottom four images were taken from the infield. The photographs were all taken on March 17th. You can see that the top photographs are not as green as the bottom photographs, but it is difficult to put a value on how much more green is present in the bottom photos compared to the top photos. In this set of photographs, any pixel that is not green was turned white by the APS Assess program. The APS Assess program then counts the number of white or non-green pixels and provides a percentage of white pixels based upon the total number of pixels in the image. We just subtract that value from 100% to determine the percentage of green pixels. From this analysis, we found that the non-covered outfield area had 74% green color and that the covered infield area had 95% green color. It's highly likely that the increase in green color was beneficial to rooting and allowed John to use larger aeration tines earlier in the season to help disrupt the sod layer. We'd like to thank John Turnauer and the Washington Nationals Baseball Club for participating in this Pace Turf Interviews with the Experts.